So welcome to this four part series on web scraping and flask. Now I've looked on the internet, I've looked on YouTube for tutorials which deal with both the back end, so how you scrape websites with Python and something called Beautiful Soup, and also how you actually put the data that you scrape on the front end, such as display it on a page, and I found nothing. So what this video is gonna do is take you through the absolute basics from the start and get you scraping websites and also putting it up on a web page using Flask. So one of the key things in this video is unlike any other video that I've seen out there, we're going to look at both the back end, so the actual web scraping and the Python, but also how to display that data on the front end, which is on a beautiful HTML page. Now, some of you are probably thinking, what is web scraping anyway? And literally it's, it's Web scraping allows the whole internet to be your database. So it's, its uses are in things like marketing and research, finding deals, lead generation. I mean, the list is completely endless. But recently, there was a guy called Avi Shivman. He's on the screen behind me. Um, he was a 17 year old, well, a teenager anyway. And he built this site. Now it's nothing particularly special, not even difficult. And I'll show you how to sort of create this bit um, through the videos. We'll be looking at actually recreating what he's done. But he created it at the right time. And believe it or not, he was offered millions and millions because he was getting lots of hits onto his site. Um, so, you know, young boy created this website. How was it done? Web scraping. Again, some of you might be interested. You have lots of gaming sites such as this one. This is steampower.com. Now you have to actually analyze the site and look at the deals. Uh, I don't play games myself, but I understand that you know you have to look at if something has gone off um, or up or down and you could web scrape sites like this to show the latest deals um, and the latest offers. Of course price comparison sites are huge, they're one of the biggest uh, uses of web scraping and again we'll look at something similar to that as well. One aspect of web scraping that you should look into is the legal aspect. Now, of course, if you're web scraping some sites and you're putting huge amount of sort of uh, strain on their server because you're maybe someone's visiting your site and it's getting billions of hits. Well, of course, then it's going to cause an issue. If you're creating a site, which is probably just doing a bit of you know web scraping, it's unlikely to be causing um, any issues. However, it is always good practice if you intend to web scrape to actually contact the web, what the website owner and talk it through with them or speak it through with them. Often they will have some guidance on web scraping. Many sites actually have APIs as well, which provide you with the data that you might need. So this is something we can talk about as we go through it. So before we do anything else, if you are extremely advanced and you've done Flask before, you follow the tutorials, you could just pause the screen because we're going to be making two simple pages to start with. And in the, in the attempt of just making that simple, Flask page, which says scraping stuff, and it's going to be ready for us to put our web scrape data on it. So to do that, you make one page, which is going to be called webscraper.py and have that code in it, which I'll show you in a minute. But if you want to just get ahead, you can do that. And you're going to have one HTML page, which I've called home.html, which you put, remember, in your templates folder. And that is going to be just a simple, I've just cut and paste it from Bootstrap and I've changed a couple of the titles around. So let's get started from scratch. I'm going to start to show you how to open the command prompt, make the folder, run the virtual environment and do each of these 10 steps to get ready for web scraping, which will be in the next video. So as mentioned, it is a good idea at this point to go back and watch the Flask series, which is just a five part series, series to take you from zero to pro um, if you've never done any Flask before. But even if you haven't, I am going to go start from scratch, but I'm going to go slightly quickly. So I'm not going to explain things like the command prompt like I do in the other series. So we open up the command prompt and we navigate to the folder that I would like to create the Flask project and the web scraping project in. In my case, that's going to be the E drive. So I just let's see what files I have in the E drive by typing in DIR, I've got those files and yep, that sounds good. So let me make a directory and I'm going to call it my project. I'm then going to cd into that project folder. Um, let's just check that this is actually happening just to show you that it is. 
So you can see that here's my project folder which has been created and now I'm going to go into it. So let's put that on the side, on the right hand side. So I'm now CDing into my project which is where I am and in there I'm going to install what's called a virtual environment. Dead easy, you just type in Python M VNV Venv and then the name of your virtual environment. I'm just going to call it environment and you can see pops up over there an environment. Now I need to enter into that virtual environment and in that I'm going to install Flask, Beautiful Soup and everything else that we need. So what I do is I go um, env scripts activate which is the command to actually activate your virtual environment. You can see this little env over there which means I'm in the virtual environment and now I'm free in this bubble which is called the virtual environment to install everything, all the dependencies that I'm going to need for web scraping and of course for Flask. So the first one is going to be pip install Flask. So it's going to take a while to do that depending on the speed of your internet connection. And after that we're going to use something called beautiful soup which I'll explain. So let's say beautiful soup 4 which is the latest version and it says unknown so let's try that again. And you can see it's installing beautiful soup. So remember we've gone pip installs flask beautiful soup we're going to also use something called lxml so again simple and easy just pip install lxml and finally we're going to be using requests so pip install requests now remember you can go back to the beginning of this video where i have the 10 steps and you'll see that we're working through those 10 steps so we've done all these things and now we're ready to actually set up our flask page which is going to be the exciting place where everything is going to be set up and all the web scrape data that we have is going to be displayed on this page. So here we are, we have done all of these things. Now keeping in mind that the first video series that I've done on Flask will take you through the absolute basics including things like downloading Python, but for now I'm assuming that you have all of that done and we've done all of that. So the next few steps are going to involve actually creating a Python file which is going to serve the, the roots and an actual HTML bootstrap page which is where we're going to put our web scraped data. So let's start by creating the web scraper.py file. And we do that, I, you can s still see my command prompt is open there but I'm going to close this down by opening up Sublime Text. Now Sublime Text as I've recommended in a previous video is highly recommended rather than using idle or notepad. So you just go to Sublime Text and download it and you'll have a screen which looks like this and you can use the free version. So this is a previous thing that I've done. I'm going to remove this project and then I'm going to open up the one that I have. So open folder, find my E drive and the folder that I've just opened which was this one and actually there's nothing in it. So first of all I'm going to make a folder, let's call it Web Scraper, and then I'm going to open that up in Sublime Text. So in here, I'm just going to click on the folder on the left hand side and say New File, and this is going to be, if I say File Save As, I can call it Web Scraper .py. Now you can call this anything, you can call it app.py, home.py, I'm just going to call it Web Scraper the key thing being .py and save. And we're going to set up our Python page, which is our Flask page, which is going to actually serve, uh, set up something for us, which is going to allow us to show the HTML page. So we begin with the basics, which is just always from Flask, which we've already downloaded. Import Flask. Remember, we're going to be using something called render template, which is to render the HTML template. So just add that in there, which that means we're importing that as well. And to make this into a Flask app, just telling the computer that that's what we want to do, we do that step there. And then down here is where we set up our roots. And again, I'm not explaining this, but you can watch the videos if you want to know more or go more slowly. So here we set up our root 
and this is just going to be a home route. I could call it home if I wanted. I'm just going to leave it blank. And that means when the user goes to just open up their server, they're going to come up to this uh, page that we're going to render here. So I have a function and I'm going to render a template called home.html. Now down at the bottom here, this is just a little convention which is going to make it easier for us to open um, Python and run the server in a much more efficient way. So I'm going to type in if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals equals and that main thing there. And I'm going to say if uh, that happens, then run the app in debug true mode. And you'll see how this works. So if I press control S, or just save that, this is done. It's as simple as that. Now, the thing I haven't done is that I don't have a home page, a home.html page. So let's make that. Now, first of all, in the web scraper um, folder, I'm going to say new folder in there, and I'm going to call it templates. It's down here, templates, press enter. And in templates, I'm going to have a new file, and this file is going to be called home.html to match what I had in my roots. Now, in the home, .html, the idea being that when we run the server and we just open up the, the main sort of URL that the server gives us, we will come up to this home HTML page, which is going to be our beautiful website. For now, we're going to keep it really simple, but we want to use Bootstrap. So let's open up Bootstrap. And again, all of this is explained in detail about what Bootstrap is and how it works in the Flask series, the beginner series. But for now, we just go into Bootstrap. We I think a, a good place to start is the documentation. You go down to the quick start, it actually gives you a starter template. This is good enough for us. So I'm going to copy that and you'll notice that the starter template has your bootstrap CSS. It has all the required meta tags. So you just take it literally and you copy it. And of course, we don't want it to say hello world. We want it to say something clever like my first web scraper. And we want it to say something like, and we can even add some p tags to it, it's paragraph tags, Here. okay, something like that. So I've set this up, nothing fancy, and I'm going to save that. So the setup is literally this page, and inside a templates folder, home.html page. And now let's run the server. We'll get back into our virtual environment, run the server and show you how this works. So for if some reason you've closed down command prompt and you have no idea, you've been coding your sublime text pages and you've no idea how to get back into it. And what, what we're going to do is run the server. Let me show you how you do that from the beginning. So we open up command prompt. Remember, I'm going extra quickly, but the other series does go very slow. We get into the directory that we want. Uh, there's my project where I saved all of this stuff. So I'm going to change directory CD into my project. And then uh, I can see that there's my ENV, my virtual environment. I want to get inside my virtual environment. You're going to have to just memorize this command because you're going to be using it again and again to activate your virtual environment. To do that, you type in ENV scripts, oops, and it's always backslash actually for scripts and activate. And you can see that now you are inside your virtual environment, inside my project. Now, what I'd like to do is run the server. In other words, actually run this page as well, this web scrape, is it web scraper.py? I'd like to run it, which is, and the code in here is just simply telling me to render this home.html page, which we've made here. So how do I run web scraper.py um, in order for us to actually see our home.html page on the screen. Well, this is how. First of all, if I say dir, you can see that this is the web scraper folder. I'm not in it yet. Let me just demonstrate that to you. So I'm out here in my, uh, I'm in, you can see I'm in my project. So that's where I am. I'm actually not in the web scraper folder, which is where the web scraper.py file is. So I'm going to go into it, cd, uh, what was it called? Web scraper. There we are. And now I can see my web scraper.py file, which I can run. Now, before you can run it, you need to do one little thing. Uh, and 
let's just write set flask. This is for a Windows machine. Set flask. De uh, actually, you've, you've kind of done that in the code, so we can ignore that bit. Let's say set flask app is equal to web scraper.py. And it doesn't do anything, but what it's done is something really cool that now you can run your web scraper.py just by writing Python web scraper.py. And what it should do, don't worry too much about what all of this is, but it is literally running for you a development server. Okay. And the only bit you really need is this, which you copy and paste it. Take note here to, to end the server. Don't sort of, you know, hard end it there. Press control and C. But you copy and paste this. You go into your browser, paste it in there. And what you should see is the HTML page that you just made. So this is being slightly slow. Let's make sure that we've saved everything here. Backslash. And if in doubt, just control C it. So I'm just going to stop it there. And let's try that again. There we are. So there's our website. This website will scrape stuff. Welcome to this scraping website. Nothing exciting, like I said, but we have set it up. We'll scrape stuff from other websites. So if I save this, you can see that it automatically refreshes and we have this development server. We can start now to go and build the back end and look at how we can scrape websites. So in this video, we have done all of these things. Let's just color that green for completeness. And basically we've set up the back end, which is going to has allowed us to download Flask and Beautiful Soup and LX, um, LXML and requests, which we'll be using in the next video. We've also set up the front end, which is Flask, allowing us to render a home.html page to the screen, ready for us to use. <laughs>